Hi there, this is Eshu. I'm the abbot here at Zen West Buddhist Society. This Living Zen podcast is just one of the many resources we've created at Zen West to make Zen practice and training more available and accessible to people all over the world. Instructional videos, printable resources, and much, much more are also available on our website at www.zenwest.ca. If you're a regular listener, I'd love to hear from you. So please drop me an email at office at zenwest.ca and let me know who you are, how you got started, and what brought you to Zen. Everything we make available in person and online at Zen West is only possible because of the support of our members and associates, people like you. If the efforts of our community are making a difference in your life, I'd like to invite you to show your support and take part in making it happen by becoming an associate or member of the Zen West Sangha. You can do this by clicking the Join Us tab on our website at www.zenwest.ca. Thank you for your support, and thanks for listening. Welcome, everyone. This is a lovely full room. Let's all bow together. You can make yourselves comfortable. And Jicky, if you could, I don't have a watch, so if you could do f- ring at 15. So I'm a junior priest with Zen West Buddhist Society. I'm the Buddhist chaplain on campus. My name is Soshin. Uh, some of you know me. Some of you, it's your first time here. Um, My instructions are to sit here, open my heart, then open my mouth. And I I really love that instruction. The part that's hard is to say something relevant, I think. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about um, my practice which um, today involved my morning sit. I have a daily practice. I try to sit between 30 minutes and an hour a day. And um, this is a really simple, you know, deceptively simple instruction just to get on the cushion and count the breath and See what happens. Be curious. Investigate. It's so so simple and yet sometimes so very difficult to do. And so we uh, need a few things to just make it a bit easier. And um, and I've been learning uh, programming. I, I got an app on my iPad. It's called CargoBot. I don't know if anyone's heard of it. And so it's like just like baby, baby, baby steps in... in um, it's not even called programming anymore. What's it called? Coding. It's called coding. Anyway, so um, it's a sandbox. This app is a sandbox that uh, has everything I, I need in it to easily uh, learn just basic, some really basic logic. And, and it occurred to me that um, the form we have here is a lot like that. It creates a safe container in which to experiment, uh, investigate, and um, see what happens. Um, part of the container is uh, this room, the people in it, the support we get from just being together. Um, another part of the container I use is taking my practice out into nature and um, Doshu and I went for a walk today at the Cedar Hill Park and uh, we just walked around the golf course on the trail and drank in the sun 
and the smells, the wonderful blossoms on the bushes and trees. And, um, and let nature work its wonders on us. Um, this has been a stressful winter for me. And part of practice is showing up and noticing what's going on. And um, so I've been showing up and noticing that I'm a bit stressed. I'm a bit unhappy. I'm a bit concerned. And um, that's fine, but my, my standard way of dealing with that is to watch CSI, eat chocolate, and uh, I don't know about you, but a diet of that is just not the thing. It just doesn't work for me. Maybe it's because of my age. But um, So I've been noticing how that really, really doesn't work. And um, that's part of, that's just part of practice, just being there and noticing and, uh, and just noticing how difficult it is. It's, um, the mind is a slippery thing, and uh, it, I don't really want to pay attention. And in fact, there's um, a series of pictures, um, sort of uh, a graphic that, I don't know, it came into being around the, sometime around the 1200s maybe, and it came to North America maybe in the 40s or 50s, and, or maybe earlier, and it's been um, really helpful for me. It's the, some of you know it, it's the ox. Um, so there, I think there's 10 pictures, but uh, one of the first one is um, uh, knowing that there's an ox, and the ox represents the mind. In some cultures, it's a elephant and a monkey. Anyway, so the, so you just know there's a there's an ox somewhere, and so um, you're looking for the trail to the ox, like you know footprints, and um, searching for it, and then uh, you know eventually I'm not sure exactly what all the stages are. Mm, you actually do find footprints, and. Uh, this is this is all about paying attention to the mind and the really the trickiness of the mind, and uh, so then you find the ox, and then maybe you try to lead it, and maybe it leads you. Uh, and mo- for most of my life, my mind has been leading me on a merry chase, um, pretty much unbeknownst to me. Um, so. You find the ox and you try to lead it and you try to put a leash on it and uh, and eventually um, maybe you ride it and it goes on from there. But th- these are all, I think, to my mind, they're all um, examples of mindfulness and paying attention and being present and aware of what's going on. I find it really helpful to know that hundreds of years ago people had the same problem noticing what their mind was doing, paying attention, coming back to the present moment and coming back to it and coming back to it. The the, the pictures of the ox go on, like the the process is is really quite deep. and there's there's parts to it to it that I, I just don't understand. But um, you know the person is riding the ox, and uh, and then the ox disappears, transcending the ox. Uh, then the person disappears. Um, and then they find the source. These are beautiful pictures. You should Google it and have a look for yourself. And then after some time, the person is able to come back into the world with the wisdom that they've found. I find that very hopeful. Um, Who knows if it applies to my life. I'm happy with the idea that there is an ox, that I'm looking for the footprints, and, uh, and that we have this amazing container 
you know, Tuesday nights. Um, we've got Zen West. Uh, we have so much support in the community. Uh, we have a teacher, Eshu, who's here tonight. Uh, we have a teacher who speaks our language and uh, does interview, and, and you'll see an example of that tonight where Zen West members, people that have been around for a while, can go and have interview with our teacher, which is an amazing thing to be able to go and take all your doubt and your worry and your concern and your, wow, <laughs> what's going on here? And just have someone hear that and say, well, have you tried this? Um, it's like, for any of you who do know Cargo Bot, there's a little hint button. You hit hint and you get, when you're really stumped and you get this uh, wonderful idea of how to approach this um, coding problem. And it's the same thing. You can go to interview and go, well, and uh, as she will say, well, have you tried this? Or not, maybe he won't, but um, it's very, very supportive. And um, similar to the coding, there is so much depth here, so much that we can do with this practice. So much more than coding, but um, uh, that was just a metaphor for um, for what we have available to us. So I I guess uh, in summary, what I wanted to say was that um, what we have is simple, yet you can dive deep. And we have support in doing this work. And we have the the wonderful, um, just the joy that, for me, the joy that comes of taking the time out in my day just to breathe and to be present with the breath and then oh, the 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 um oh, the joy that comes from that and taking that then taking that out into the world into for instance the walk in the park and it's just one step and then another step and another step. It's so simple and yet so deep. And I find that, as some of you know, when you do this practice, feelings bubble up that you might not have noticed or dealt with in years or decades, and that's okay. They bubble up, and you just deal with it, and then the next thing bubbles up, and you deal with that one step at a time. I've always hated it when the teacher does that. (laughs) It is so tempting. Just... Mm -hmm.
It's such a great tool to become present in the room. So keeping up practice a little bit every day, remembering your supports, the teacher, the teaching, and the sangha, a group of people here supporting us. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to the Living Zen Podcast. If you follow Living Zen through iTunes, I would very much appreciate it if you would take a moment to let me know what you think about it by rating or reviewing the podcast so that new listeners can also hear what you have to say. Thank you for your time and for your support.